Right, welcome back to the channel. Today's saga is going to be uh, drive shaft spline. Getting the drive shaft spline out of the hub. Seized in there, I've tried it before to, to no success, but I'm going to try again. Um, at the same time, I'm going to fit a new shock on the front. So I've got new genuine force shocks there to go on. So that obviously means taking the strut out. Getting the uh, the front steering knuckle and the hub off of the drive shaft spline. I'm going to try one of those uh, gear pullers just there. Look. So I'm just getting set up at the moment. Uh, um, first things first, I need to get those uh, those hub nuts loose because they are tight, tight, tight. I think they're something like 300 newton meters. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm just preparing really to get it up in the air. Um, let's see, make sure it's nice and secure. Right, so as you can see, I've got the wheel off. Um, I've got that hub nut cracked off, as you've seen earlier. I now want to um, get that caliper off. So they, that's the ST, that's the ASBO upgrade. They're quite heavy, so I don't want to leave that. You shouldn't leave them hanging anyway, but I'm definitely not going to leave that hanging because they're nice new ones, nice and shiny, and I don't want them damaged. So. I'm going to try and find somewhere to hang them. So what I think I'm going to do is take that cover off there and see if I can get a zip tie through it, through somewhere and through the caliper. Perhaps wrap the caliper up as well, protect it, stop it getting damaged. All right, so I'll do that in a minute. Got the uh, caliper tied up, so there's no tension on that hose. Zip tied up. Got the ABS wire out. Need to undo the drop link. Get that out, and the steering knuckle. Right, so next we've got to get the uh, the ball joint out, the bottom and bottom of the knuckle. Right, that's a ball joint out. So I'm going to be taking the whole strut and the drive shaft out. So, all right, wish me luck.
is out. So I'm going to break it down a little bit more. I'm going to get the uh, strut out of the knuckle. So that means getting that out. I think it's uh, 15, 15 now. out before that's why it's coming apart so easy what I do is uh, stick a chisel in there open that knuckle up that pinch and that flies out no problem. Again I've had it out before so right so we can change the strut compress the spring I've got a new spring compressor tool so we'll see how that goes and also while I'm doing it I want to try and get this drive shaft free out of that hub right so there's the uh, hub and drive shaft in the vice I'm going to leave it like that with some penetrating fluid. That stuff is wicked. That is really good stuff. So I've sprayed it down in there a little. I'm going to leave it as soap. And hopefully that spline come out of there. So yeah, I'm going to leave that there for a day or two like that. I might put some heat on that hub. Try and expand that. And hopefully the shaft will come out. Hopefully. Right, so I don't advise this at all what I'm about to do, but um, it's just an idea. So these nuts can be a pain to get off. Inside that shaft there, which is the shaft that forms a, the, the rod for the shock absorber, there's a hex. don't know if you can see it. That's uh, a hex fitting in there. So you basically get Allen key on that and they round off sometimes. If it's old and it's been on the car for donkey's years, they can round off when you're trying to hold that and uh, get that nut off. What some people do is they get um, a set of mold grips on the shaft, the shock as well there. Not only do the mold grips slip, but it can damage the shaft. So this is what I like to do. Like I said, I don't advise this at all, not really. But if you get impact wrench, get on the lowest setting. And just crack it off, just so you start and stop immediately.
these are it. Cup hoots. Looks alright. Looks decent. The return is non existent. We're extremely slow. Let's see what a new one's like. You want any squeak? So now I just want to make sure the end of that spring is on that stop end there, that stay, whatever you want to call it, while I release the uh, compressor, release the spring compressor. These things are wicked. I couldn't recommend these enough. They make change in spring so easy. Right, little progress update. There's a strut. New spring. New top mount. The lot. Genuine Ford. Don't ask me how much. That's all there is wicked, by the way. I know I said it before, but I think I paid 90 quid for it. And it's worth that all day long. Honestly, it made that job so easy. It's brilliant. Brilliant bit of kit. Right, I'm having, having trouble getting the um, <clears throat> drive shaft out of hub. So it's just seized in there solid. I have actually got that on soak at the moment. I have had now for the past day or two. Um, I have been hitting that, not hard, but I have been tapping it to try and I've been warming the outside of the hub up with a heat gun, nothing serious. I'm just trying to expand this, open that, that and knock out. So I'm heating this up and I'm knocking down on the drive shaft. But in doing so, I think I've damaged the thread a little bit because that nut isn't going on now. So not easily anyway it will go on with the impact but i don't want to force it so i've got um, a die on order i'm going to clean that thread up a new hub nut and hopefully that'll be that'll be good to go back on this uh the expense is just running away at the moment so i don't i want to try and you know cut costs a little bit it's just getting ridiculous So yeah, that has got to go back in to the car. There's one unit, so that and the strut. So I'm going to mount the strut back onto the hub. And it all has to go back into the car as one unit. Same both sides, passenger side as well, driver side and passenger side, exactly the same. Those splines are just sea solid in those hubs. Won't come out. So while that was out, 
I thought I'd take the opportunity to clean up under air a little bit. So where that uh, suspension wishbone goes in there on the subframe, that will, that's a quite a common area for these to go rusty. And this one was a little bit, only like surface rust really, but I thought I'd take the opportunity to take it out and clean it up all in that area. So end of the wishbone as well, that bit you can't normally get to. Um, a few other little bits and pieces as well I noticed when I was there. And that's what I'm going to do for now. I mean, eventually I'm going to take this subframe out and get it sandblasted and powder coated, but for now, that'll have to do because, um, you know, when the subframe does come out, um, I might as well do the clutch and then that's that's more money again. Clutch, clutch kit, uh, starter motor's on its way out you probably heard from one of my other videos so it just gets crazy do you know what I mean the expense so I'm just trying to do things bit at a time really rather than uh, skinning myself out but yeah it's not a cheap hobby by any means so again you know that's what all these videos are about I'm trying to keep the cost down and show other people how I'm going about that keeping the cost down. The strut and the spring and the top mount, I think, roughly, the strut itself was about 95 quid, the, the shock absorber was 95 quid, the spring was, I think for the pair of springs, they were, so uh, yeah, you can see where I'm coming from. It does get expensive and uh, it drives me to drink a little bit, so I'm gonna have a, a beer of six now, all right? See you in a bit. Right, so I'm going to admit defeat on this. I cannot get that drive shaft out of that hub. And the amount of force I'm putting on that and the impacts, I'm not happy with um, doing that with regard to the bearing. So I've broken a gear puller. All right, it's not the best gear puller, but that just disintegrated one of those arms. Look, I've been hitting the top of the drive shaft not excessively hard only you know with a smallish hammer but um in doing so i was concerned i don't think i actually did damage the thread um but i was concerned i was going to damage the thread so i've stopped basically i'm just going to leave it so just in case i i did damage the thread i got myself a die so um there's a 21 mil thread and i think it's a pitch of pitch is 1.5 mil I think, yeah, yeah, 22 mil by 1.5. So as you can see, that, that thread's fine. So I'm happy with that, because I had visions of uh, having to put a new drive shaft in it, new bearing, etc., etc. And like I say, there's nothing wrong with it. So yeah, clean up the thread. There's a couple of new genuine Ford hub nuts there to go on. So I'm gonna do that, get it all back together, clean the hub up and refit it back to the car, I think. Yeah, quick clean up. Combination of uh, poly wheel, scrapers, a little belt sander, sandpaper, wire brushes, you name it. I've had it on there. It's not brilliant, but it do for now. It's got rid of the worst of it. Better than it was. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit more, get all the oil and grease off of it, and then treat it with some Hydrate 80. So this is the hub after the Hydrate 80 treatment, which I don't think is bad at all. Damn sight better than what it was. So I'm gonna give that a coat of paint and uh, I'll show you what that's like.
right, so I've got the uh, front strut out and the drive shaft, as I was saying. Which is all right, that's sound. Got a little bit of cleaning up to do and stuff. Again, same as the other side, but unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that, there's a split in that booty. But if I do a little bit of cleaning up, replace those board joints, um, I think that would be pretty good for now. the old ball joint. I'm just going to compare them to the new old pin diameter 21 mil thereabouts. New pin diameter 21 mil. So the other thing that was questionable about these things is the height of the pin. So I've got 74.96 mil there that's the old one and the new one seventy four point nine seventy five mil seventy four point nine nine seventy five mil I found that the most important thing is to um, find the center of the rivets before you start drilling as accurately as you can it's difficult because it's not an exact science these rivets i'm sure they when they're put in from manufacture they um they distort a little bit so they're not perfectly round i don't think they're not too bad but you know when we're talking about mill perfect i don't think you're going to get it so measuring the center of those is a bit of a challenge and um the reason you want to get them center is because you don't want the holes in the arms to become oval shaped um because obviously that would mean the new ball joint wouldn't sit right in the right position. So basically what I've done, I've cleaned off the top of the rivets with a file. So I've got a nice clean surface. And what I'm gonna do with a roll and a fine pen, I'm gonna try and find sensors of the rivets as best I can. See, they're all slightly different measurements. That one's about 18 mil, so half of 18 is nine. front one see that's more like 16 17 mil in diameter so after that is eight and a half so eight there center of that one is 16 17 again so eight and a half again Eight and a half, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's impossible, I think, to get it absolutely mill perfect. Um, what we've got there 16, 17, yeah, same again.
Right, don't know if you can see that, but I think that's about as good as it's going to get, really. So the other thing, get yourself a centre punch, punch the centres. Also, get yourself a decent set of drill bits. I've got uh, four, I'm going to start off with four mil, six, eight, and then eventually ten. Once I've got the ten mil all through the middle, I'll grind off the top and um, try and knock it out. Yeah, so keep adding oil as you go in. Look after these little drill bits. Use decent ones in the first place. I would say a minimum of four mil, 4.5, because otherwise they just snap. Even the four mils, so you've got to be really careful with them. Look after them, keep putting oil, keep clearing the holes, all the rest of it. Don't let them overheat. Keep that cutting edge nice and sharp. And then, Go up one size, six mil, or two sizes, I should say. So once you got that first stole in, it's not too bad. So already I can see this whole area has gone off centre slightly but it's too late now to get it back I've just got to go with it. I've usually ground the heads off before, but um, decided to uh, knock them off because they're quite central, they're not too bad.
soon as the head's off, I've got to get the remainder of the rib out. And again, what I found is if you get underneath, give the head a tap underneath. Gonna come out easy, but it's not. when the note changes. These notes. So that went bad. That was quite central. That's it, out. So a lot of grinding, scraping, later got the main areas where the uh, wishbones go in. A few other little bits and pieces. Clean up the wishbone as well. Look. It's not perfect, but it'll slowly surface rust down. I'm going to treat this now with Hydrate 80 and then uh, paint it, get it all back together. Yeah, so that's the uh, ball joints out. It's the old ones there, obviously, on the right. New ones to go in. There's the rivets. Just came out of the passenger side. So the driver's side's pretty much ready to go. Fit everything back in. This side. Bit tight down here, so I have been struggling, but I think I've got the worst of it done. So I've cleaned up the arm, top and bottom, underneath. And if you can see, I 
So these areas here, where the wishbone bolts into, that was uh, my main concern for now. It's difficult to show, but uh, a few other little bits and pieces. Surface rust, I just want to nip in the bud. But yeah, it's going well. So I'm going to wait for this, go off dry, let it dry, and then uh, give it a coat of paint, probably tomorrow now, and then start fitting it all back together. Locating pin on the back, needs to line up, back of the knuckle. I don't know if you can see what I've done, but I've got a chisel in the uh, back of the knuckle where the pinch bolt goes through in between the two sides so it opens that up, makes getting the strut in easier. And then the lo locating pin is behind there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to stick a new pinch bolt in there now. Now I'll be ready to go back on the car. Copper grease. So these are the ones that seize up easy. So the 15mm knuckle pinch bolt, it tightens onto the strut, 83 newton meters. So I'm going to try a slightly different approach, for me this is anyway. Um, new ball joints, new dust cover guards, I'm going to fit the ball joint to the knuckle before and try and slide that into the arm. I've seen other people do it, so I'm going to give it a go. So the bolt goes in from the back and the nut on the front. Right, now comes the tricky part. I've got to try and get all that in the car. Right, here we go. There is a particular way that these top mounts go in. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a little nodule there. And there's also arrows. So this goes to the outside of the vehicle. Tie rod end. Yeah, drop link next.
30 newton meters. So now I'm going to torque at that pinch bolt. That's a T55 on that side. Right, so next is the uh, truck rod end to the steering arm on the knuckle. And that's a torque setting at 40 Newton meters. Right, so I'm going to do the uh, wishbone bolts now. So it's a two stage torque process. The back bolt needs to be torqued to 90 newton meters, that's stage one, and then another 60 degrees. And the front bolt is 80 newton meters, and also another 60 degrees. But all this is done while you've got the suspension in its normal position, i.e., the weight of the car on that arm, basically. So. So it's just off the axle stand. So now I can tighten those rear and front bolts up to their torque setting. That's fine. Okay, so that's 90 newton meters. Now it has to go another 60 degrees. Forty-five. That's it. Eighty. Sixty degrees. That's good. Now I can release that. Chat. They got a torque setting of 130 newton meters, believe it or not. 